Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. And today is going to be a state of the game. It's going to be a very important state of the game because, well, let's go over a couple of things that have been happening first. What's been happening? Well, the last time I did one of these videos, I was doing the playthrough with my Aurora, and somewhere along the way, I started having problems with my iMac. I talked to you all about this, and that all caused me to actually have to update, upgrade my video editing workstation, which has been updated, and man, is it rip-roaringly awesome and beautiful, although an eclectic nightmare of wires right now because I really haven't spent time to make things look nice, but it's amazing. So I got myself a Mac Mini. But in the meantime, it meant that because I was trading my iMac in, it was seven years old. I really didn't feel comfortable selling it to somebody knowing it was seven years old and that I was starting to have problems with it. I traded it in with Apple, got some extra money back because I would be buying a brand new Apple Mac Mini and I traded in a couple of old phones so I was able to get a $2,000 Mac Mini down to $1,200 and then a little bit over $550 after my discount. I added this to a I added this to a a setup that included an external graphic card. I've already talked to you about that. That external graphic card obviously was going to be the RX 590 from none other than AMD. But for the Apple, that's actually a pretty decent card. It's not excellent. I could have done a Vega 56 or a Vega 64. But I wanted something very inexpensive. And my plans are late next year to upgrade it to whatever AMD has at the moment. And the main reason for that is there are no Apple drivers for NVIDIA cards right now. And the AMD ones are the ones that Apple uses in the system. So they're the ones that actually have drivers. So everything in my life worked out. And the actual graphic card is pretty amazing with my Mac Mini and 2560 by 1440. I get on, on high settings or ultra settings, I get right around 70 frames per second all the time in Tomb Raider, but I don't play Tomb Raider enough to even care about that because mainly this is just video editing. So I get the Mac Mini on a Friday. And then I take a 32 gig to twin 16 SO DIMMs from other world computing and start to attempt to put them in. I take the computer apart, put the RAM in it, put it back together again, only 16 gigs is reporting. Take it apart again, put it back together again, only 16 gigs is reporting. Take it apart, put chip in um, place one, nothing reports. Put um, the chip in DIM two and it reports 16 gigs. I'm going back and forth going, but 8 gigs just showed up, so I put Apple's back in there, and 4 gigs shows up. And I go back, and I'm watching their installation video again, and I take it apart, and I painstakingly put it back together again exactly the way they did. And lo and behold, nothing. Still only getting 16 gigs reporting out of my 32. So I decide, let me go watch somebody else's video. And what it came down to was the angle at which the first DIM, a SIM, had to be put into the DIM slot. And on Otherworld Computing site, which is MaxSales.com, they're a wonderful company, so I'm not knocking them. They showed it going in on an angle and then popping in. But on this other site, it showed it going in almost vertical and then popping it down, waiting for a pop, and laying it into place. That one video, which I can't remember who posted that video. It was just some guy doing his upgrade and giving his advice. That actually fixed everything and stopped all of the hell I was having. At the same time, I had been taking the two-week period off from Star Citizen because I really didn't want to gather any major video. 
because I know that by the time the 15th of March comes in, which is just about eight or nine days from now, I'm going to be in the PTU. I almost always get in on the first round after the Vacati, and I know it's probably because of my status as a backer more than anything else, because I know quite a number of other people that are in that same boat with me. It might be because of the support that I've given CIG forever. I don't know, but it's most likely due to the status as a backer. And I started thinking, going, Man, I'm doing this run-through with my Aurora, and all I'm doing is pointing out bugs that are going to be fixed, and also showing the monotonous of being in a two-planetary two -planet planetary system, or a two-planet star system. So I decided that I was probably going to pick that back up again when 3.5 came back out, or comes out. I started looking at 3.5, and I can't tell you how excited I am. And it made me really excited to fly my 300 series again, since they're getting such a big rework. And of course, I'll be getting a couple of those wonderful Reliance when that comes out. And I'm going to not even talk about the other ships right now, because there's so much coming out in 3.5, R-Corp, new flight model, 300s, Reliance, a few other ships, that I just want to just take a step back and just think about the biggest change for me. And for me, it honestly was the second ship I ever bought was a 300. First ship was an Aurora, second ship was a 300. And I remember sitting inside this 300 and just thinking, I feel like I'm in a BMW Roadster, which is exactly what they wanted you to feel like. And I fell in love with the ship. And I fell in love with the ship long before I even flew it. Thank God, because if I'd flown it, I never would have fallen in love with it. But I just utterly thought it was one of the nicest ships that CIG was building. I've done this with other ships, too. The initial Constellation was amazing, but the interior just drove me insane that a society a thousand years in the future didn't know how to compartmentalize their ship, and if you took one hit, everything was gone. All the atmosphere and all the ship was gone. And when they updated the Constellation for the first time, I did one of these videos. Farewell, Constellation. We say goodbye to the original Constellation as the new one, you know, is about ready to come out. And I decided to take my 300s for a ride today, just, just to go from Port Olisar over to Hurston, just to take a look at the beauty of them because I know they're not useless but in my hands useless in any mission I would try to run and I'm kind of excited about the updates because they do bring in the customization customization system they do make the ship usable and make better use of the internal volume of the 300 they make it more practical but I am disappointed in some ways. I'm disappointed for the same reason that I'm highly disappointed with the Mustang upgrade. And it's that this ship definitely looks like something from the future. It's angular. It's got those really sharp, amazing looking sides. And all CIG seems to be doing to old ships is just smoothing them out and making them all blend. Now, I could understand that being the design philosophy of Origin, that there's no terminating lines, everything just is beautiful and swift and pretty. And you have to think about the people that spent their money so long ago that when you're making such a big drastic change, we're moving from the 300 to the 325 right now, that you're making such a drastic change that maybe you should give people the opportunity to vote on it or at least swap out the ship for something else if after seeing it, playing with it, and enjoying it, they decide it's not for them. 
Now, I don't know if that's going to happen to me. I just, you know, I can't say I love the interior of this. I never did. I love the interior right here. But taking all these beautiful, sharp, angular sides, kind of something that would look like a jet fighter from today. You know, something that would look like it was a stealth fighter. Taking that away and making everything rounded and blended and giving these lines that don't terminate. It's not the ship that I fell in love with and purchased. Instead, it's like something I have to fall in love with yet again. And this is why I always caution people that ask me, should I get involved with the game? Should I get involved with the game? Should I buy something? And my thinking all the time was... I know what I'm getting into because I support the game and I'm a content creator and I have to keep doing my videos, but I don't want somebody to fall in love with a ship that may be changed somewhere down the line. Now we do have some ships that may not be changed. I mean, major changes have already happened to almost everything that we saw in the beginning. Some ships got bigger, some ships got wider, some ships got smoother, some ships got softer lines. Some ships had total reworks multiple times, like the Constellation. And some ships became something totally different from what they looked like when you purchased them, like the Mustang. So, if I sound bitter, I'm not. I, I'm going back to my statement I made a few minutes ago. I knew this would happen. I knew what I was getting into. And... It's not going to dissuade me from making a purchase on something I might fall in love with in the future. You know, I'm waiting for them to totally redesign and change everything about the Polaris that I so fell in love with when it came out. But in the grand scheme of things, I, I trust CIG to deliver me something that works in the universe that they're building. Something that makes sense in the universe that they're creating. I just don't trust them to make something that's going to make me continue to love that product as much as I would have if I had seen it the first time that way. I'm still flying around in my Mustang looking at it going, it's just missing something. I know some people absolutely love the new Mustang. But there was something... There was something just captivating about the sharp lines of that, of that ship. Kind of like there was of this ship. The original 300 series. And now I worry. What's happening? Where are things going to go? Now, I am an Origin fan. There's no doubt about that. I pretty much have everything except for the 800. Well, not everything, but most. I have the 100, the 300, the 315, the 325, the 350. I have all those, and I have a 600. I, I love the ships. I think that they are some of the most beautiful ships in the game. But I'm kind of... This is kind of a bittersweet moment for me because as I get ready to welcome the brand new 300 series into the game, which is going to bring such an excellent piece of the game into fruition, which will be the customization system, I can't help, again, I'm, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, I can't help but be a little bit um, sad that such drastic changes are being made to something that I was shown, I was asked to purchase, and I made the purchase based on the feelings I had for the ship at the time. Now, if I go out and I buy a Ford Mustang today, and it gets delivered six months later, I'm going to get the Mustang that I ordered. But that's not what I'm getting here. <laughs> And I, I know that I'm making too much of this because I know that most of you probably feel like, oh my God, it looks so hot, it looks so good. But to me, this is what looked good. 
Sorry to bring you down on that one, folks, but I am getting pretty excited about DNA and the female model and finally being able to see a little bit more diversity in the game. Now, a lot of people pick on me and say I talk too much about it, and the reason is the game is supposed to be realistic, it's supposed to be diverse, and honestly, everybody looks the same. And yes, it's an alpha, but we're being asked to play this as if it was a real game. And for me to enjoy it, I really need to be able to connect with the character I build. And I'm finally going to be able to get that opportunity. But even more so, with the DNA piece of the pie, when you're doing more um, character building in the game, when you're creating your character, you have many more choices. Eyes, nose, ears, face, muscular build, whatever it is. And I can't wait for that to be fully implemented. So another thing that's changing in this one, I'm actually a, a full go for, and that would be Area 18. Area 18 in the beginning, if anyone remembers it, <laughs> there was a time that you couldn't walk the streets without being run down by a gray cat buggy, or where you couldn't find your buggy blown up by somebody that was running into it. So the fact that we're getting a complete overhaul of Area 18 is actually pretty exciting for me. And some of the things that I like that they're doing here are learning their lessons from Hurston. And I hope when they say they're learning their lessons from Hurston that it has something to do with the placement of certain systems. When you fly into Hurston, you have to land. You have to get out of your ship. You have to walk to the elevator and pray to God that the elevator works and that you don't have to re-log in, which will just put you all the way back at your habitat in most situations, and then take the train and get to where you were going. But sometimes the elevator just doesn't work. I've found that so many times, and that's what happened at the end of this video. So you pray that that works. Then you walk through the spaceport. You go all the way to the train station, you get on the train, you get off the train, you walk out of the train station, you walk for a little bit, you go to the admin office, and you sell your stuff. Sometimes realism in the game, sometimes realism in the game, I'm going to say it again, sometimes realism in the game is too much realism. I, I am going to say this, I hope to God that when we walk through Area 18, the spaceport, which has moved much further outside of the city, so you're not landing right in the middle of it, so you have better frame rates, so blah, 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 blah. I hope that they put the admin office in the spaceport because if I need to get on a train, wait five extra minutes to get to the center of the city, and then move myself all the way through the rail network, Oh my god, I'm going to drive, it's going to drive myself crazy. It's going to make every single one of these missions take forever. And I think that's why a lot of us in the current build of the game are taking missions that go from one Lagrange point to another. So there's a lot to be excited about. There's some things to be sad about if you like the designs of some of the older ships as much as I do. But the best thing is, as each one of these quarterly updates come out, little by little, CIG is building much more confidence in their customers, in their backers, in their statements. And people are beginning to trust CIG again. I trust them. I know that they're making the best damn space simulator ever, and I'm pretty excited about that. And I know that at the very end of the day, they have my best interest at heart. But sometimes good intentions <laughs> aren't always received well. And in this situation, my sadness for seeing the 300 go in its current design I, I guess I have to wait and see what the new one looks like in its full finished design. 
not what we saw at the space show just a few months ago. The galactic show, whatever it was. Well, folks, I think I spoke enough. You heard some of my fears, some of my excitement, and hopefully over the next week to 10 days, I'll be able to start bringing you some videos that actually start to show off whatever happens inside of the PTU. Well, let's say that happens more in about 15 days. Okay, I'm going to give them a little bit extra time. Thank you all for watching and for commenting. I'm just going to mention one more thing now. And I do want to go to this year's Manchester Citizen Con. And I do want to take on my role of running the registration desk again, which is something that they've already offered me. But I might want to do it. Um, I might not be able to do it. And the best I could say is if any of you want to help, a dollar a month is all that it would take. And that would be by going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. You could join our Discord server, have some fun with us. A couple of us play D&D &D every um, Saturday night. I should say a few of us. And although our Sunday nights have been pretty much lame the last three months, they're going to be making a comeback real soon. So you'll be able to fly with me and take part in not just Star Citizen, but other games that I will be playing over the next few months. And join us in voice chat. Me being... Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, and the rest of us being the enablers. So if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button because it really does help make the channel grow. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification icon because that's the only way that you get notified of my videos these days. And folks, thank you so much. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.